Hi, this is Simon Armstell, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at a technique for creating advanced wipes that it will really pay you to get to understand and experiment with. So let's make a start. So project set up, 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second. And because I want to make this into a transition for Final Cut, I've gone with a duration of just one second, which I think is going to be a, a good sort of default. Just delete that group. I don't know what that's doing. So I've got two images here, this city and these mountains. And I've deliberately renamed them. Uh, so the bottom layer of the city is called outgoing and the top layer is incoming. And that'll just help us for when we turn this into a transition. We could have started as a transition, but I actually want to show you the process by which you can actually trans transform it later on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new group. And then let's come to the library, generators, and let's bring in a color solid. Come over to the inspector. Let's make it scale 200%. And let's come over to the generator color and let's choose white. Then we want a copy of this, right click, duplicate, and then make the color of this other one black. So this white, let's come over and shift it over on X, negative 1920, which is the width of our project. And this black one, positive 1920, like so. So now we've got the screen divided into black and white. So I can turn off that group temporarily. And then what we can do is use that as a mask for the incoming layer. So right click, add image mask and grab the group, drag it into the source well and switch the source channel to luminance. And now you can see we're split between those two images. And if we come to the group properties and position, right click on the X, add parameter behavior ramp. And I'm just going to set a start value of something like negative 1024 and an end value of positive 1024. Just gives us a little bit of leeway for what we're going to do later. So now the wipe runs across like that in a very conventional fashion. And if we wanted a soft edge wipe, we could simply add Gaussian blur, just make it as soft as we want and so on. I'm going to leave that blur there actually and turn it off because we're going to come back to it later on. So now what we can do in addition to, for example, coming over to the group and using the shear to get an angled wipe, for example, we can do some really interesting things with messing up this edge. Now, the easiest thing we can do is to come to filters and stylize and crystallize. You can see immediately we've got this nice broken up edge. It's much more interesting than the than the flat edge that we had before. And Indeed, we can increase the size of it a lot. And because it's got a speed control, let's crank that all the way up. That means that the edge is going to animate progressively through the duration of the wipe. Now, you'll also notice that using crystallize has given us these sort of semi-transparent areas. And that's obviously not something we necessarily want. So we can fix that by coming to filters and color and threshold and depending on the threshold value we can completely get rid of those like that and if we want none at all we can turn the smoothness right down but I'd, i recommend to keep a little bit of smoothness to avoid jaggies so anyway that's as you see taken care of that crystallized problem uh, i also want to show you that we can actually use that blur as well. So I'm going to just move it up above the crystallize and turn it back on again. And then if we turn up the blur amount, it's quite a lot, you can see that we can soften off the effects of that crystallize. So now we're getting a, a smoother, more sort of wavy effect. And it's not so jagged as it is like that, depending on what we want. So crystallize is a nice option. I'm just going to turn off everything and look at another one, which is filters distortion and underwater. And let's reduce that size down to something like 0.5. And again, you see we've got an, a different sort of edge. And again, underwater has a speed factor, so we can actually introduce speed 
and that edge will animate throughout the transition. We can obviously increase the refraction. If we go too far, we tend to get sort of this effect, which is probably not always desirable. So you want to kind of keep an eye on how far you go with the refraction. Uh, you can go really low with the size, so 0.1, and you get something like that, which is actually quite interesting. So another one I quite like is filters, distortion and glass block. And I think we need to actually have some uh, initial distortion as well. So let's go for the crystallize, turn the crystallize back on again underneath it. And you can see how that's given us quite an interesting edge again. Probably need to turn on the threshold as well for that, just to clip it to black and white. So that's quite an interesting one. Turn that off, turn off threshold. Uh, let's also try distortion, and I do like this one a lot, is insect eye. And you can see again that's given us this nice sort of rough edge. So together with that crystallize it's, it's, it's made it much less uniform. Uh, you'll notice that we've got a sort of faint honeycomb pattern here and that's because of the border size. It's something we might actually want to do. For example we could actually have a very very large border size. Uh, let's start like that. So let's keyframe that. So 48 at the beginning and let's keyframe it down to nothing at the end. And you'll see that we get that kind of nice sort of dotted pattern. You'll notice that depending on the kinds of effects we're applying, we will need to adjust this ramp. So you know, that end value would need to be greater for this to, to cover the frame like that. So that's, that's a kind of fun thing you can do with insect eye. But I think generally speaking, I would probably not bother with that because I like the effect without that border, just like that. So what else can we do? Let's just introduce you to something else that is really quite useful. So we come down to our incoming layer and we come to the drop shadow. Immediately if I turn that on, you can see the potential for this. So I'm just going to turn the blur down to nothing and we can increase the distance and the opacity and just adjust that angle probably to something like 360 to make sure it's just going left to the right like that. And we're not stuck with black, are we? So we can actually go with sort of any color we like and you know, adjust that distance to taste. And I'm just gonna leave that on and you'll see how nice this can actually be. So let's come back to our master group here and let's add some more filters. I quite like using stripes because as you see, this gives us this really quite interesting multiple striped edge effect. So I think for this, let's turn up the insect eye refraction quite a bit. And you can see that we get loads of, of nice lines. And they're, they're nicely ununiform. And that's a really nice effect, I think. So I'm just going to turn off stripes and let's look at another one, which is uh, stylize and uh, pixelate. At a small value, it's not very interesting, but as soon as we increase the scale, we're starting to get uh, much more interesting results like so. Let's maybe turn off the crystallize, adjust that refraction, maybe turn back the underwater. You can see we're getting a really nice sort of pixelated edge there. And let's look at another one, filters, stylize, and circles. I really like circles. It's got a lot of uh, lot of uses. So I'm going to turn off pixelate while we work on this. So circles. And you can see that what it does is it creates this very interesting sort of edge like that. We can adjust the, the fall off. Uh, maybe just turn off insect eye, I think, for, the, for this one. And you can see we've got that effect. Obviously, loads of things we can do just to, to finesse all of these things. You know, maybe we have a smaller drop shadow for that. But I also want to show you something we can do with, instead of the drop shadow or maybe uh, together with the drop shadow. So I'm just going to make a new group just above that incoming layer, drop the incoming layer into the new group. And to that group, I'm going to add stylize and extrude. And again, some really interesting results there. Um, you know, I'm not going to waste time sort of uh, finessing this, but you can see that there's a lot we can do with this. You know, we can change the, the brightness and so on. And, um, you know, get a, get a really interesting edge using 
extrude on this incoming layer. So I hope you're starting to see that th there's just so much you can do to create an interesting edge. So almost any kind of distortion you apply is going to be quite interesting. Actually, there's one I forgot I'd show you because I, I do like this one. It's Filters Distortion and Funhouse. Uh, and you can see immediately that's kind of, you know, on top of our circles, that's quite interesting. And if I turn off circles, well, let's just turn off that extrude. That's probably better like that. You can see that's pretty interesting as well. But anyway, I'm getting carried away. And let's now just set this up as a transition for Final Cut. So I don't think I want that. I want a stripey one, I think, unlike this. So I'm going to turn on Insect Eye uh, Underwater. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll probably keep underwater, I think, like that. As I say, we need to think about making sure that the transition clears at both ends. So let's just adjust that. So we're just getting the start of it there. So my start value, I'm adjusting. So we're just seeing the beginning and then we need to push it further off at the other end like that. We can just leave a tiny little bit of it and it'll work. So now that's our transition. There's a few things we'll want to do. And, you know, I suspect one of the things we might want to do is to publish these various drop shadow parameters. So let's just quickly do that. But the other thing we'd want to do is to be able to control the direction of the wipes at the moment is just left and right. Obviously, we can publish the shear as we talked about. So let's actually do that. Let's just go for the X only. I think it's probably good enough. So publish that. So to be able to to control the, the actual direction, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new group right at the top and I'm going to drop my main group into it like that. Turn the main group back on again turn the group I've just made off again. And then I need to use the enclosing group here, this top one, as the image mask source. So drag that down there. And what we can then do is to add its Z rotation to a rig. So add to a rig and we want to add to a new pop up. So I'm going to rename this first snapshot as L to R. So that's left to right. Uh, rename the second one as right to left. Rename the next one as yup to down, U to D. And then plus to add a new one and then D to U. So let's come back to the beginning. So left to right is good. So the right to left, we want to change this angle to 180. And now you'll see that the transition happens in that direction there. So up to down, not sure which angle this is. Is it 90? No, I've got that wrong. That's the opposite, isn't it? So we want negative 90 and that's up to down. And then down to up is positive 90, like so. And then all we need to do is publish this pop-up. And we could come over here and tidy this up. Let's actually just call that pop up as direction. So now I want us to look at what happens when we try to make this into a transition. So we come to file and what we can do is convert to convert project to transition like so. So this is where we need to choose our layers. And that's why I named them as I did. So transition A is the outgoing and transition B is the incoming. And you see how they've they've now been renamed as uh, placeholders. Let's just reset that to left to right because that's probably what we want our default to be. So now we can just simply save this. So save as and I'm going to save it into my category and I'm going to call it fancy wipe. So here we are in Final Cut. I'm just going to grab my fancy wipe and drag it onto the transition between those two shots. And there you go. That's our transition. See if the default duration is a bit too slow. Let's go for something like 16 frames. That's much more like it. And you'll see that we've got our controls here and we can add a little bit of shear. We can change the direction. 
You can change this color to taste. Let's maybe go for that or something. So quite interesting to add a little bit of color from the, um, the incoming shot. So that works nicely. And finally, back in motion, I want to point out that uh, instead of having to build this every time you want to wipe, you could very easily just take this group, let's call this wipeology or something, and you could add it to your library and favorites. Drag it in there. And then if we delete this, you can see that we can just add it back in again and we can add it to the the mask or the mask whatever we're actually wanting to transition so i'm actually going to turn that off and just to prove that it works with everything i'm going to type some text and uh, let's add an image mask to it and let's use our wipeology and switch to luminance and now you'll see that we've got a wipe that works with text as well so as I say, well worth just kind of leaving all that stuff in there. You can swap out anything you want at any time, change the order of things, you know, add back in that threshold if you want to kind of get rid of those gray areas. So just just so much you can do if you've kind of got this ready, ready to hand. So the point to make about this technique is it's not just one idea, it's countless ideas and you can use it in a bold fashion or a subtle fashion. You can combine anything in any order. You can wipe between two images. You can wipe on text or shapes or fills. And of course you can use it for a whole variety of, of special effects. So it's a really fundamental technique that it really pays you to explore in some depth. So anyway, hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching.